What's up guys and welcome back to Software Knowledge Solutions and today we're talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and the best settings you can use right now for the campaign version. Yes, I know it was out yesterday already, the early access version. Now obviously I'm not going to release a FPS boost guide video if I haven't finished the game and tested out some settings. Now that's what I went to go ahead and do is test out every single setting inside this game and on every single map. All right, so you don't have to do that. So I did it for you. So now this is for all users out there. It doesn't matter what user you are. You can be an AMD user, NVIDIA user, Ryzen user, Intel user, low end, medium end, high end to a NASA fucking launching machine. It doesn't matter. All you're going to need to do is follow my guidelines and you should be good to go to run this game perfectly fine on your machine that you're currently running right now at this very moment. All right, let's jump straight into this video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the first thing I highly recommend you go ahead and do is come to the display tab over here. And as you can see, I'm pushing about 180 FPS over here, right here in the selection for the display tab. Now, I push about almost 200. Normally, I am using OBS to record and I am using Wallpaper Engine in the background. So it does use VRAM of my GPU and it actually does use my GPU as well. So that's why I'm doing a little bit less FPS. But as you can see, 180 FPS is literally not bad. Um, this game is very, very optimized, but you can make the game run even better and get more frames by doing these things I'm about to show you right now. All right, so the first thing I highly recommend you go ahead and do is this over here. These play a very big role inside this game. Now, I play in full screen borderless. The reason why I do this is because I have multiple monitors. If you do not have multiple monitors, I highly recommend that you go with full screen exclusive. It will give you less input latency in the game. Now, this only happens on some of the missions that I was doing. It didn't happen on all of them, but I highly recommend if you only have one screen or one monitor or one display you go with full screen exclusive you should be good to go but if you have multiple monitors i highly recommend that you go with full screen borderless it is just in general the best way to run your game right now if you are running multiple monitors all right the next step i highly recommend you go ahead and do is this over here and it plays a very big role in the game just in general i highly recommend you go ahead and do this step right here Right, so I'm going to jump over these over here, which is just important in general, but some of these are just in general settings that you're going to need to tweak yourself. Okay, now aspect ratio is something that I normally just play at 16 by 9. If you have an ultra wide monitor, obviously you're going to change this, but this is its defaults. A lot of people use its defaults and I highly recommend you just use this default, which is the wide 16 by 9. Most case scenarios would be 95% of the community is using the 16 by 9 version. Now, V-Sync is something I highly recommend you go ahead and put on if you're getting something like screen tearing. It literally shows you on the right-hand side what screen tearing looks like. The trees are getting chopped off and shit like that. Screen tearing you can actually see with your eyes while you are playing the game. So what it will do is if you turn this on and you say gameplay only or you say menu only, I would say gameplay if you're getting screen tearing while you are playing the game. I highly recommend you click on gameplay only and just put it on there because you don't want it off or you could just actually put it on. So it will do the menu and it will also do the game for you. Now it does depend on if you're actually getting screen tearing. If you aren't getting screen tearing whatsoever and you don't see anything happening with your game while you are playing or while being in the menu, then you leave this off. Custom frame rate limit, I have mine and unlimited. This is your own personal preference. A lot of people do say that you should like cap this to like, you know, the gameplay to like, I don't know, like 300 and then like these out of focus, you put lower and stuff like that because what it will do is it will save your GPU. I've seen people actually say that on videos and on social media platforms and just on Reddit and stuff like that, that you should make this lower. You really don't need to. I'm just going to point that out there. I've been in this industry for a very long time. You really don't fucking need to do this. Like, leave it on unlimited. Your machine's not going to just explode if this is on unlimited. Just leave it on unlimited. This is the reason why I have mine like this. I had comments in my videos before where people asked me, yo, dude, why do you have yours unlimited? Shouldn't you be changing these to lower so that, that it doesn't, you know, kill your GPU or anything like that? My GPU is not just going to die all of a sudden since I'm using unlimited. I've been using unlimited on every single game I ever played. So for the love of fuck, just leave it there. Leave it on unlimited so you do unlimited frames in the menu, in the game. Wherever you are, you'll do unlimited frames, okay? The highest you can push with your current machine. So leave it like this, right? This one plays a very big role, but it only plays the most important role once I'm done with everything that I'm about to show you. We're going to come back to this, right? Display Gamma, I have mine at 2.4. The reason why I have mine at 2.4 is because I have a 55-inch ultra-wide curve 4K Samsung Smart TV. 
I have mine at 2.4 and that's my main screen I use to play my games on and stuff like that. So I have mine at 2.4. If you have a monitor or a display or a gaming monitor, you're going to put this at 2.2. Please, for the love of fuck, don't put this at 2.4. It literally spoon feeds you on the right hand side why this is used on 2.4 and why it's used on 2.2. Brightness is your own personal preference. Literally, brightness is your own personal preference, but I do recommend that you push it up from its defaults to about 60 or a slight bit higher. You do not want it to be on its defaults. Obviously, there's a lot of dark spots in the game, so you don't want that to like interrupt your gameplay or, or make you feel that you can't see shit. So just put it at 60 or a little bit higher. It should be good for you. Now, something I just want to mention is this over here. This is constant mouse to game window. Okay, this is an option that has been released into Modern Warfare 3. This was not in Modern Warfare 2 at all. So when you put this on and you apply it, you can't get off to your other screens. So if you have multiple screens and you only want to focus on this game and you don't want to go to your other screens, you can have this option on. This is why this option is here, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so something I just want to mention is this over here. Focus mode is a really nice touch that they added into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and it is a really nice feature for people out there that has multiple monitors, okay? So if you only want to be focusing on the game itself and the single monitor that you're playing the game on, you can actually go to show less over here and have this at 100%, and once you apply it, your screens that you have, your extra ones, will go completely black, and it will only focus on this main screen that you're playing your game on. Anyways, now something I just want to mention also is this over here. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. Right now at this very moment for the campaign mode, I highly recommend that you put this on on plus boost. Yes, I know a lot of people are going to leave comments down below saying, yo, dude, if I put it on on plus boost, um, is that supposed to be for my CPU? Is that supposed to be for my GPU? If I put it on on, is that supposed to be for my CPU? Is that supposed to be for my GPU? Like a lot of people don't understand why this option is here and why you should be selecting on plus boost or on. Never, ever select off. That's one thing I would recommend you never, ever do. I highly recommend that you choose on plus boost at this very moment. It doesn't matter if you're running a low end machine medium end machine to a high end machine to a nuclear fucking missile launching machine on plus boost right now at this very moment for campaign runs very very well so i highly recommend you go ahead and put this on on plus boost and then go ahead and apply these settings all right from here we're going to go to the quality tab and we're going to come inside here now the quality tab plays the most important role on your frames in the game and how the game is going to look all right now this is obviously the campaign version so it does depend on what you use inside you what you're gonna see how your game's gonna feel how it's going to run okay now i've been using the intel upscaling for a long time now with multiplayer with single player just in general with call of duty i've been using this upscaling it is one of the best upscalings in this game to make your game look like a triple a title game for me in general okay now, if you're an Intel user like me and you get an Intel CPU and it's a powerhouse CPU, it's a very good CPU from Intel. Look, I've got a 9700K. It's not the best, but this upscaling runs fucking amazing with my CPU in general and my NVIDIA card that I have. I have an RTX 2060 OC and 16 gigs of RAM. That is my machine. That is what I'm running. This upscaling makes the game look like a AAA title game. This is why I use this upscaling. If you want the best quality out of this game in general, there are two options in here to make your game look absolutely amazing if you're running a high-end machine, okay? It's going to be the Intel upscaling over here, or you're going to go to with NVIDIA image scaling and go to ultra quality 5, 90% also with the Intel upscaling, exactly the same, 90% over here, and you're going to put this on over here. Now, something I want to mention is when you put this here, this locks it automatically to on. So you can only change this and then this, right? So these are the two options I highly recommend you go ahead and use if you're running a high-end machine that runs this game very, very well, and you want the game to look absolutely fantastic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so these are the two that I recommend if you are running a mid-tier to a high-end machine right now, and you're pushing out a lot of frames, you're going to use these two upscalings. The Intel version over here, if you don't like this, then you're going to go with NVIDIA image scaling and go with ultra quality 5, 90% over here, and then on, okay? Then if you use the Intel version, you're going to go with ultra quality 90% and it will lock it on, on, okay? Then you're going to have this at normal, high, 
off, normal, very low, on, off, low, and off. Okay, I will go over the rest of the settings just now, but these are the most important things that you're going to need to do with these two upscalings. Okay, I'll go over the rest of the stuff just now, but for people out there that is using, for instance, NVIDIA DLSS, I highly recommend if you are using NVIDIA DLSS, go with balanced. You can go with balanced or you go with quality. I highly recommend you go ahead and do that. Now, this is your own personal preference, what you're going to do inside the NVIDIA DLSS sharpening. When it comes to NVIDIA DLSS, when you stand dead still in the game, there's no blur happening on the right and left hand side of your screen. But as soon as you start moving, there's blur happening on your screen. Now, obviously in this game, you're not gonna stand fucking still. So if you prefer NVIDIA DLSS, go with quality, please. And then use this as your own personal preference. This is your own personal preference on what you're gonna put this on. I don't really use NVIDIA DLSS, but this is gonna be your own personal preference, okay? With the video DLSS, I still recommend 90% and the same settings over here. Over here, we're going to go to this one over here, which is the DLAA. Now, the DLAA, I've always skipped over. The reason why I skip over this one is because this one is absolute dog shit. And I'm going to skip over it again. I don't recommend that you use this. Fuck this option. Like, I don't even know why it's in here. AMD FSR. For the people out there that is struggling with FPS right now, and it doesn't mean that you need an AMD graphics card to use AMD FSR. If you are running an NVIDIA graphics card and it's struggling to run this game correctly, you can use AMD FSR 1.0. It still gives very good quality, but then you're going to need to have this at either quality or ultra quality if your machine can handle it. Okay, if your machine is struggling with performance in general, I highly recommend you go with AMD FSR at quality over here, and then you're going to change this down to 75% like this and press enter. And you're gonna still have this one on over here. Okay, if you are running AMD FSR 1.0, Oh, okay. Now, this over here, you can still leave at normal if your machine can handle it, or you can go to low. Just do not put this at very low. You're going to tear out your own fucking eyes. Don't put this at very low. You go to low, or if your machine can handle it, go with normal. This one over here, obviously you can leave this at high. It doesn't do much in the game. As you can see, when I hover over this, nothing happens here. So you can just leave this at high. So all of these settings inside here, exactly the same. If you're using AMD FSR, just make sure you have this at 75 and you have this at quality, or if your machine can handle it, ultra quality. Okay, now we're gonna go to AMD FSR 2.1. Now this one overrides things like this one over here. It automatically puts it on for you. Now, if you use AMD FSR 2.1 and you prefer this one over here, I highly do recommend that you leave this VRAM scale target at 75 as well. You have this at quality and then you have this at normal and you have this at high yet again if you're struggling with fps with this upscaling don't have this at normal then have it at low there's not a lot of visual difference between normal and low in this game yes it eats more vram that's what it does but the actual visuals in the game does not change much but when you go to very low you're gonna tear out your own fucking eyes so either low or normal if your machine can handle normal, go with normal. You can have this at high, and the settings are exactly the same over here as well. Right. Now, a lot of people prefer Fidelity FX Cache. The reason why people prefer Fidelity FX Cache is because it makes the game really sharp. The strength is very sharp, and then the overall visuals are just sharpened in general as well. A lot of people do use Fidelity FX Cache. Now, I don't know who plays the campaign on Fidelity FX Cache. I really don't know who uses this option. But if you are, I can just explain this to you. If you are, I'm guessing there's going to be someone that's using this option to play the campaign version, right? So if you're using Fidelity FX Cache, I would go over here to the strength to 60, but yet again, it's your own personal preference. The VRAM scale, I would recommend at 75 as well, or you can push this up to 80 like this and press enter. And then obviously have this on at wall and have these also exactly the same. Now, with every single upscaling inside here, every single one of them, okay? These are gonna be the settings you're going to be using. So local, texture streaming quality, low. Shadow quality, you do not need, okay? So low. Screen space, shadows, low. Ambient occlusion, off, off, always off, leave it the fuck off. If you are losing frames, why would you turn this on? This is a video for people out there that are losing frames. That's why you're watching this, okay? So leave it the fuck off. Screen space reflections, off. Static reflection quality, 
low, all right? This one over here, tessellation, off, off, always off. I've always said this, leave it the fuck off because this actually makes your game run worse if you turn it the fuck on and it's not worth putting it on, okay? Terrain memory, max. I highly recommend you put this on max. It does not matter what machine you are running. Put this at max. Volumetric quality at low. You do not need to play around with this. And then the physics, you can leave it off. But something I just want to point out is this. If you are watching my video right now and you're running a really decent machine and you're doing really good FPS, I would actually put the physics to low or high. You can actually go ahead and do so. It doesn't eat a lot of VRAM, as you can see. So you can go here with the physics to high. The weather grid volumes is something that I don't actually use. I don't like this. But... It is a campaign game that you're playing right now. This is the campaign version of the game, so I put mine at low, okay? I can actually put this all the way up to ultra and play my game perfectly fine without losing frames because it doesn't do anything with my VRAM at all. It actually does not. So you can go with ultra here, even with a budget gaming machine, you can go with ultra over here. Yet again, you are playing the campaign version. You are not playing multiplayer. If you were playing multiplayer, I would tell you to turn this the fuck off. Because you do not need to see the weather inside the fucking multiplayer version. And then the, when it comes to the water quality, yet again, it's the campaign version. You do not need to have it at default. If your machine can't handle any of these over here and you're struggling with FPS, go with default. But with the campaign version, I actually use this. And it makes the water actually look a little bit slightly better with Modern Warfare 3. Remember, Modern Warfare 3 is completely different to Modern Warfare 2. It's completely different. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so once you applied all of these settings over here, you're going to go to the view tab over here. And then this is your own personal preference. This is literally your own personal preference. If we come to the view tab over here, I still have mine at 120 with the FOV. So I can see more on my left and right hand side, even with the campaign version. But everyone has their own personal preference when it comes to the view tab, right? I have this at affected, I have this at wide, I have this at default. This is my own personal preference, ladies and gentlemen. You do not need to copy this. Film grain is now inside the view tab, by the way. Just wanted to let you know. Uh, it's literally inside the fucking um, view tab. Yeah. Call of Duty actually listened to um, a lot of people that were complaining about settings that were all over the place. Uh, this is supposed to be actually in the quality tab. And this was in your interface. Okay. Now it is in the view tab. You can have inverted flash on. So when a flash pan goes off, your screen doesn't go white. It actually goes black. I take advantage of this by having this on. It's very good for multiplayer. Now, I don't know so much about like the campaign. I mean, I probably didn't get even flashed once in the campaign mode. I flash other people, but then I crouch. I don't actually see me flashing them, but I stand up and then they're all like, you know, fucked up and they look down and shit. So they quite flashed. But I have this on. I've always had this on the inverted flash. I take advantage of this. Please go ahead and take advantage of this if you want to go ahead and do so. Now, this is the most important step you're going to need to do after applying these settings is this right here. You're going to come over here to the display tab over here and you're going to say restart shader preloading. You're going to click on this and click on restart, ladies and gentlemen. Once you have clicked on this, you're going to need to go out of your game, if you're playing it through Steam or Battle.net, and then relaunch the game. Let the game start, and then at the top left corner, it's going to say installing shaders. Once that is done, you go to Modern Warfare 3, you play the game, and you tell me. Give me some feedback. Let me know if this actually worked for you, if it boosts your FPS, if it made your game run any better, let me know. Leave a comment down below and smash that motherfucking like button if this video actually worked for you. As always, ladies and gentlemen, just here to help the Call of Duty community as best I can. And yes, I'll be uploading as much videos as I can as they do updates and stuff like that to keep you guys informed about the game settings and stuff like that. Don't worry, I got you covered. As always, ladies and gentlemen, hope this video helped you. Smash that motherfucking like button, leave a comment down below. And as always, peace out.